West to Harmin Freon and welcome to yet another video. No matter what all the actors and actresses and the executive producers say about us, the people who are not excited about what we are seeing from the upcoming The Rings of Power, we are not istophobes, we are not racist, we don't have any problems with, well, anything else but the desecration of the legacy of Professor Tolkien. Of course, we know and do realize that we find ourselves in 2022. The show was being made, well, already in 2017, 2018. That means that there are quota in Hollywood, so on and so forth. The cast needs to be diverse. Well, what can you do? You can't do anything, anything about it. What I am talking about is this, my dear friends, and this is a little snippet of what my reviews of each and individual episodes will look like. I will not be playing full-length scenes from the show nor the trailers because, of course, I would get very understandably a copyright strike. I am not Amazon's shill. I, well, would refuse, even if I was offered that choice, I would refuse to go to Oxford to see 20 minutes of rough footage and to get a goodie bag with uh, Rings of Power merchandise to meet the showrunners so I can get a little bit of cloud and so that I can use some scenes in my videos. I am not a sellout. I will forever fight for the legacy of Professor Tolkien. However, I will be showing you bits and pieces from the individual episodes and then I will be talking about it quite honestly and I hope and I believe that you will enjoy it. What I'm talking about is the latest teaser which only shows and proves what I've been talking about for the last couple of months and indeed even before I made this very channel European Law uh, because they managed finally to prove me right again. At the beginning you see Galadriel, my dear friends, uh, someone asks her, and I think it's, it's Miriel, because it's uh, upon the arrival of Galadriel to Numenor, which of course is preposterous. This never happened in the books. Uh, Galadriel never traveled to Numenor. She was never an adventurous traveler with a ten-handed sword, uh, you know, behind her shoulder. She never traveled throughout Middle-earth with a mysterious character called Halbrand. Spoilers! There was a leak uh, that he is actually Sauron in disguise. So not Anatar, but Halbrand. And uh, she definitely did not meet Darmiriel and did not team up with her to go uh, and slay orcs uh, from left to right. However, she asks, uh, name thy thyself and Galadriel here, or Galadriel as we should call her, because she is an Amazon's original Galadriel and not Tolkien's Galadriel. By the way, if you see this uh, little building over here, this is a uh, clear reference to Minas Tirith, this little precipice, this little side you know, walk um, that uh, stretches uh, into the distance. Uh, by the way, I was already talking about Numenor and uh, my stance on, well, what it looks like. And in my eyes, it could have been more, uh, well, gloriously looking. We should after all, take into consideration the fact that at the time when this show takes place, Numenor should be at the height of its power. And uh, in my op opinion, it shouldn't like like uh, a uh, like a maritime city somewhere in Greece, but of course, much more noble, much more majestic than. Uh, than much later Minas Tirith looked like in uh, The Lord of the Rings. And Minas Tirith looked a thousand times better. I've got a little replica of Minas Tirith on my shelf and I will look at it every day because it uh, stands even after 20 years as one of the most beautiful pieces of cinema architecture. Now, we, all right, we will get past uh, the um, inappropriate architecture of Numenor. And then our little Galadriel has, uh, well, a teensy tiny uh, Daenerys Targaryen moment. And she starts naming, I am Galadriel, uh, and she says, I am Galadriel, daughter of the Golden House. <laughs> and then you can see, all right, still a shot of Numenor, and there you can see a hall of uh, the Numenorian kings, 
with her, uh, this is Elendil, by the way, who isn't uh, the Elendil of Tolkien, but Amazon's original Elendil. And this is Galadriel right after her little seafaring adventure with Halbrand, the daughter of the Golden House Sea, and there she has a sword singing moment or sword swinging moment. She plays uh, a little bit of a Legolas over here. <laughs> Right, see? <laughs> so she named, right, Commander of the Army of Gilgalad. Yeah, Commander of the Armies. This is the precise uh, mistake that I have been talking about for the longest time, the misunderstanding of the character of Galadriel. Now, my dear friends, when the Hobbit movies depicted Galadriel better than this crap show, well, it tells you th- uh, something, right? The Lord of the Rings by Peter Jackson with all its changes, is the best adaptation in the history of movie making, apart from The Godfather, maybe. And The Hobbit films were, of course, a completely different question. Very few people, and even fewer Tolkien fans, actually enjoyed The Hobbit films. But if you look at the scene from Dor Guldur, when Galadriel chased off the necromancer... Oh, wow, this scene depicted the true nature of Lady Galadriel perfectly. She wasn't the commander of the armies. She wasn't uh, a Xena warrior. No, most certainly not. She was one of the most powerful sorceresses in the history of Middle-earth, taught by Melian the Maya. She bore Nenya, the ring of power, and even before she, she bore that ring, even before its creation, she was one of the most ethereal beings in Middle-earth, and her power lies in her supernatural elvish strength, not in the sword, not in, in the phallic symbol. But this is not the only phallic symbol in question. There are, be, there are going to be a lot of phallic symbols in this show. Let me tell you something. And then, of course, uh, la la la, she names it. Oh, look at that. Yeah, there we go. Look at that sword. Look at that hilariously large weapon. Now... Of course, I can imagine this kind of sword being in uh, the hands of uh, the male warriors, the, the descendants and the, the, the kin of Feanor, but definitely not Galadriel. Look at all these elves with their short hair. Now this, this fella over here, this elf here, it looks as if he had an army haircut. And he, he's got a mullet, that one. That one looks like uh, Joffrey from Game of Thrones. None of these elves have long hair. This is, well, strange. Well, it's lucky that at least Galadriel has long hair. Commander of the armies of Gilgalad. And by the way, this is a woman that I made a video about yesterday. She called out uh, all the fans who apparently, according to her, are sending some vile messages to her... Uh, well, uh, cast mates of color. I haven't seen anything of that sort. I've only seen constructive criticism like mine. Well, but you know. So she's an activist. And if you look at her social media, she's an activist, uh, an extreme activist. So there you go. Very good, um, Amazon. You have made Galadriel into a leftist activist. Yeah, so she names it, names it, names it. And then, all right, right after the uh, Daenerys Targaryen moment, Amazon has a little MCU, oh my god, so random joke moment, because there's silence, right? <coughs> and then Sauron, <coughs> I mean, I mean, uh, Hellbrand, looks at them, and it's his time to introduce himself, and he says, Hellbrand. <laughs> oh my god, so random. If you think about each and every, like any Marvel film, this is that precise kind of joke they said. Uh, they they make all the time, like Galadriel, you know, th- th- names all her all her titles for for two minutes straight. Everybody's in awe. Oh my God, this is the Elven Princess, whatever. Hellbrand. <laughs> all right, and then yeah yeah yeah. Look at that. That's what I'm talking about. So, my dear friends, 
at the time when this takes place, Galadriel is already, according to the law, but we know that Amazon is not only is breaking the law, but there is no Tolkien's law to begin with in this show. So, not only is she married, but she's already ha- uh, had a um, daughter, Celebrian. So, Celeborn and Celebrian are very much in the picture, very much a part of her life. And at the time when this should take, take place... Galadriel rarely leaves uh, the side of Celeborn, but of course they had to provide this character with place to, well, be a strong warrior, an adventurer, and to have maybe at least implied a little bit of a romance. Look at... Now, hey, you will not get around it. The, uh, nothing might be out of it. Nothing might happen. They don't necessarily have to shag in this show. But look at this look. Look at the look Galadriel is giving to Halbrand. Uh, they are... Look, 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 look at that. Look at that. She wants, to, she wants to shag him. Look at that. She just wants that D. She just wants that Maya D. Look at that. Oh my god, look at, I mean, look, t- 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 you can't tell me this means nothing. I mean, he's going to be uh, a-, a favorite character of all the simps. I mean, oh my god, he's so handsome. And if he's Sauron, I- indeed, I can fix him. <laughs> and they, um, she, uh, she takes her dagger from him. I hope I can catch the right moment. Look at that. Well, well, I I mean, this is bloody innuendo if you've seen one. She grabs the phallic. It looks like a dildo. It, or, you know, it, it really does. Kind of. <laughs> she grabs this phallic symbol from his hand at the level of his pelvis. And the next scene cut are those exact looks that we have been talking about. If this does not imply that those two want to screw, I don't know what that is. This September, my dear friends, the atrocity is coming. This September, this sept- a man and an elf. Psst. Look at that. So they will be traveling together. Circumstances arose. Mm, circumstances arose. Oh yeah. You know why I'm so excited? Because this only proves me right. I'm 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 not angered. I'm not angry by this show at all. I'm actually quite happy and excited. Look at that. She looks like El- Alice from um Tim Burton's Alice from Wonderland which is another character who was made into a bloody warrior. Um, so I'm excited because I was proved right even before this show gets released. Just from the latest teaser, I am I proved absolutely... Yeah, she's leading the army. She never did that. She never did lead an army anywhere. On a horse, on a horseback, swinging swords, prime video. You can go to hell. Oh, all right. Uh, once again, I'm excited because uh, well, I've predicted this. Th- this would happen. And um, the more episodes come out in September, the more right I'll be. And I'm very much um, wondering what all the shills and simps will be saying. I know what they will be saying. But it's just an adaptation. It's not Tolkien. To- well, of course it's not Tolkien. But it's, not, it's also not adaptation either. So the only gripe I've got with is are all the names. Galadriel shouldn't be called Galadriel. The Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power shouldn't be called the Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power. Because by using those names, they are crapping on the legacy of Tolkien. And Tolkien estate, they can go bug themselves as well. Because to, after the death of Christopher Tolkien, to sell out like this, for an atrocity like this, they should only go bug themselves. All right, let me know in the comments down below what you think about this bound, bound, bound moment be- uh, between Galadriel and Halbrand. And if you love it, uh, all right, <laughs> bye.